so if a question comes that how does galvanization prevent corrosion you will write that zinc will sacrifice itself since it is more reactive and it will get corroded instead of iron and due to this even if there is a scratch or the zinc layer is broken somewhere still the iron will not get corroded because still the zinc will react first so this is all about galvanization so you get this very common question uh, if the zinc layer is broken still it does not still the iron object does not get corroded why because zinc sacrifices itself and even if it the layer is broken still the zinc only will get corroded and not the iron because zinc is more reactive next we come to a very good method of prevention of corrosion which is known as alloy now what are alloys alloys you can call them as homogeneous mixtures or homogeneous mixture alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a metal and non metal anything it's just that there is there has to be one metal and then you can add non metals or metals anything there has to be one base metal so alloy is nothing but a homogeneous mixture just a physical mixture no chemical change and how is it made it is made by first melting the metal then adding the other elements in proportion of course you just cannot add any any amount of uh, the other element there has to be a fixed proportion and then cooling down cooling down the mixture of the alloy so you just melt the metal add the required substances and then cool down so this is how an alloy is made some examples of alloys are steel so why is the, why are these alloys made this is a very good example because you no know, iron in its pure form it is very soft because uh, and uh, i mean it breaks very easily i mean it bends very easily so you can't use that iron to make any object so what we do is that we add around 0.05% carbon to that iron and this mixture gives us steel and it becomes extremely hard steel is extremely hard as we all know so just by adding this much of carbon it a soft substance changes into an extremely hard substance so alloying changes the physical properties of the substances another very good example is that bronze which is an alloy of copper and tin i hope you uh, 
know the symbols this is of copper this is of tin so copper and tin are both good conductors of electricity but bronze is a bad conductor so see the physical properties change so that is why to bring a favorable change in physical properties we use this alloy and obviously alloying will prevent corrosion since the physical properties have changed so now the uh, attack i mean the moisture in the air will not be able to attack so easily on this mixture apart from steel we also have stainless steel all the utensils and all which we use in our home are all mostly made of stainless steel stainless steel is iron and this carbon plus chromium and nickel this is chromium symbol this is nickel symbol so this these four components make up stainless steel and steel is not very shiny it is a rather dull looking material but stainless steel i mean when you add chromium and nickel it gets a shine and obviously it is not corroded i mean uh, you might have seen that stainless steel tiffin boxes or stainless steel um, any other box they will not get corroded even for years and years that is because they are alloying uh, and they are made up of an alloy and since uh, uh, they own the other components are present in present in this alloy the corrosion does not take place so easily or other does not take place at all another very important alloy is called solder it is made up of lead and tin this is lead symbol pb and this is tin and this solder has a very low melting point so this solder is used to join objects because this is an object this is another object it has a very low melting point so heat it little bit it will melt and you put this inside this and then it will cool down and these two objects get joined so that is why it is called soldering of two uh, mati two objects you use this solder which is an alloy of lead and tin to join the two objects then we also have brass which is an alloy of copper and zinc then we have amalgams yes what is an amalgam an amalgam is nothing but an alloy containing mercury nothing else if any alloy contains mercury it is known as an amalgam so this is all about alloys you just need to remember they will ask you what what are the components of brass what are the components of solder or why is solder used in soldering so you will just have to say that uh, since solder has a very low melting point it is used to join the two metals together and all or maybe they'll ask you the components of stainless steel steel they'll ask you the definitions of alloy galvanization corrosion so you don't have to learn definitions as such you can just make up corrosion is basically degradation or destroying i mean the metal gets destroyed so degradation is a good word so you can write degradation of metals by what the attack of 
air, moisture, other physical factors. And alloy will be basically a homogeneous mixture, not a chemical mixture, a physical mixture of a metal and a non-metal or a metal. I mean a metal and other metals or a metal and non-metals. So definitions I don't think you need to learn by heart. You can just little bit use your head and make them up. And it's not like they'll ask for a very bookish definition. You just need to know the concept and then and you can get full marks.